Hello guys, today I will show you how to build a simple mobile application using Flutter and Laravel API. This is an example of what we're going to build in a new course. So this is a CRUD4 transactions and another screen CRUD4 categories. And we released it as a new course on Laravel Daily, long awaited course. Here's just one example in a comment on LinkedIn when I announced that the Flutter 3 course is coming. So yeah, it's finally out. It's pretty long, almost two hours read. And this full course is prepared not by myself, but by my colleague Modestas. He was busy for a month on Flutter while I was busy on Laravel 12 stuff shooting the videos about starter kits and other news. So the course itself starts with Laravel API and from that we'll need just one CRUD for categories and then we'll get into how to set up the Flutter and how to create the first screen. You'll get familiar with concept of widgets and how to style them and then we'll go all the way until our first API call for this categories list. So from Laravel API, I will very quickly run through that. We create a new project with non-starter kit. We create one model with migration for categories with the name and the user ID because the application will be multi-tenant so each user may track their own expenses. We create API controller, resourceful controller, and we just return category all from the list. Then we install API because it doesn't come by default with Laravel 12 and Laravel 11. Install API, we'll create routes API file and install Laravel Sanctum, which we'll use throughout the course for login and registration screens. So we have route API resource, then we seed some data with Faker, and in the database we have the list of categories. And now from API client, from Postman for example, or whatever you use, you can see that we have categories returned. Great, we have the first API endpoint. And also for the APIs, I prefer to use eloquent API resources in Laravel. So the structure is a bit different. It has data wrapper on top. So we create our category resource and then use it in the controller. So we override the names what are returned. So we don't return the timestamps, for example. So we return the category resource collection. And then in the postman, again, the result is this. Now we can use that API in Flutter to get the data to the mobile app. Next, we go to install Flutter and the tools around that. Flutter is a framework of a language called Dart, which is popular for mobile development, but not necessarily. This is the homepage built for any screen, and this is created by Google. For mobile applications, another popular alternative is React Native. Both are popular, React Native or Flutter, we just decided to go with Flutter in this course because it seems to be a little bit more popular in Laravel community. So we install Flutter from the official website, it is free, and then for ID you may choose VS Code or Android Studio. In this course we will show screenshots from VS Code, and then to test if it works, you run terminal command Flutter Doctor and you see if everything is okay or something is missing. The next thing you need to set up is virtual device. Basically what Flutter will show after you write code, kind of a virtual device. And in the course you will see the link to the instruction how to do that. And then we go into VS Code and create Flutter new project. And then we can immediately click F5 or Flutter run. And that Android emulator, that virtual device will show something like this, the screen of that first application. Here's the zoomed out version. I'm not sure why Modestas made such a big screenshots. Maybe we will make it a bit smaller after shooting this video. Anyway, now let's get familiar with what's inside. What is the code? for that screen and we'll actually change that code to have a different screen with hello world. So the main file we're working with is lib main dart in the project code. This is the code that we will write. So we will use material design. So we import that. Then this is our main function kind of like index PHP in PHP Laravel. And then we create stateless widget. So the word widget you need to get familiar with for Flutter there are stateless widgets and stateful widgets, which we'll talk about later. But basically you create a big widget and inside of that big widget, you create smaller widgets and then inside of those smaller widgets, even smaller widgets and so on. This is kind of the most simple example. So for my app, bigger stateless widget, we return the build method and return material application with title 
and a few more parameters what's inside so text is a widget which is placed inside of another widget called app bar which is placed in another widget called scaffold so this is kind of hierarchy so you can again get used to that and some widgets have more parameters like this and after writing this code and by the way you will get access to the repository inside of the course as you can see these are the comments that contain widget 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 word everywhere and then as a result we have this screen i will show it like this so this is head welcome to flutter and this is our text hello world in the center so this is basically how you create your screens for your mobile application in widgets next we get to the lesson where we create login form and this will be another example of widget full screen in the same main dart we add more code so inside of our material app and scaffold inside we have body column column is a widget and then children of that column are widgets so this is a list an array and array elements are text field another widget of text field with the parameters of how that text field should look like so this is for email this is for password and then there's a button another widget called elevated button which looks a bit elevated and inside of that button there's text login which is another widget widget of text just placed not anywhere on the mobile application but inside of the button and also you can add some styling with a lot of parameters you can read them all in the documentation of flutter as well as huge list of available widgets and then this is the result screen of the code before this is text field text field and elevated button next i jump a few lessons ahead where we build a stateful widget which means widget that contains data which then we will get from the api so this is the result screen we will build in a minute so for that we create a new screen we're not working in the main dart anymore we have categories list for example and inside there's quite a complex structure of state so first we have stateful widget not stateless and then we define our state called categories list state this syntax may look complicated but that's how it is with flutter it's not like php where you just define the property it's a bit more complicated and then inside of that state we define our list of categories for now static so it doesn't come from the api yet and then we can provide more properties almost like in php object oriented programming class and then our state is actually a widget so we still have widget build with the text on top and then inside we have container we can define colors but the main thing is list view builder so we're building a list of items and since we have categories here as a variable we can use it in the list view so each list tile widget will have text widget inside with categories item text and then after we build that screen we need to register that in the main dart i've skipped a few lessons where we imported the login and register screens but this is the screen that you can then use as a route with clickable buttons in the mobile application and then the final lesson i want to show in this video is how to transform that to get the data from the api so this is the smaller screen these are the categories from our api repeating but it doesn't really matter to make api calls there are a few things that we need to prepare first install flutter package for http calls then we need to create category model similar to eloquent model but in dart where we define the fields in this syntax and here we have two properties id and name coming from the api remember a few minutes ago we've built the api with specifically that structure also for android we need to grant the permissions to the api ios doesn't need to do that but this is the line that you need to add in this specific file for android and then to fetch the categories instead of our static list we create a structure called future list this says flutter thing which means basically that this variable will be set sometime in the future after the app started running and this is how we define that future we do http get from the package that we have installed and also important you cannot use local host in this case you need to host the api somewhere or use service like ngrok to have some kind of url and then after a few manipulation of json we have categories as data data and that whole thing is actually a method called fetch categories which is async which means it happens later this is where the future comes into place and then we have 
init state kind of like a constructor and we're calling parent constructor super init state in this case and then we assign our future categories variable this to the result of that method of fetch categories and then in our main widget that we had built this becomes a thing called future builder with a list of categories also adding a few checks if snapshot has data then we show that with data index otherwise we return text widget with some error so yeah this is kind of the quick overview of how you can interact with laravel api with flutter building the screens with widgets if you want to continue this journey then welcome to the full course i will link that in the description below there you will have the repositories for both flutter and laravel api or you would be able to copy paste here the code snippets from the screens inside the lessons what do you think we'll use flutter for mobile apis or maybe you prefer react native or something else let's discuss the mobile applications with laravel api in the comments below that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos